Okay. Hello, Robertina. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, it's great to have you part of the Money, Ruins and the Sea exhibition. So before we go into the questions, it would be great to um, hear a little bit about your practice and yes, from, from your own, <laughs> in, in, in your own words. Irini, first, thank you for the invitation. I'm really, really glad to be part of this kind of uh, constellation in the exhibition also. Because I think all the works, they have like uh, some interesting uh, resonation between themselves also, which I think is always great to be placed like that. So in general, in my work, I try to explore and point out the problems and challenges which are happening with the human uh, interventions and presence in the aquatic environments. And I really try also not just be the one who is saying what everything is wrong, but also to, especially with master classes with students or similar, also, and also through my works and concepts, uh, to think what and how we could change that, you know, and where the changes could happen. Of course, um, these topics are very complex. So I present them through different points of view in my projects. So sometimes there is more like immersive. Uh, space and uh, presentation of that and sometimes is uh, much more uh, like simple but much more direct as is in the work Aquatosan which is also part of the exhibition. That's great and um, in Aquatosan like that you're presenting uh, in in the uh, exhibition in Money Ruins and the Sea uh, you call you call like it it yeah, it's a quote of saying uh, su uh, subaquatic quest for serenity and like one, the, the full title. And what kind of um, took me when I experienced the work is the, uh, obviously when you are immersed and you hear like the sounds, it can be quite disturbing in terms of like the experience, in terms of like you you try to identify like what you are uh, experiencing, what, what you're listening to. And it's something that I feel it could be quite alien for many people because obviously we don't realize how much um, activity and uh, noise also uh, is under like under the sea, right? And thinking about how much of the of the goods that we consume, of everything that we rely on, uh, comes through is transported through the sea, but also how much of uh, a human activity is taking part in the sea, which is something that we kind of because we don't experience it, we don't. It's not visible in in the majority of people. Then we don't realize that. Um, there is uh, an astonishing like an amount of traffic and noise uh, in the sea. So I was wondering like how um, through your work you experience, you kind of, you know, communicate that and uh, the, the idea of like how human activity uh, has shaped the ocean and the um, and marine life and the creatures that live there. And yeah, how, what would you, what is the experience that you want people to take I know it can be different from for many people but yes uh, I would love to hear that from from your perspective as well yeah as you said you know in a quote scene I really try to point out this like uh, human technological presence in aquatic environments this means that you know aquatic environments they're much different than terrestrial world which we are used to you know and the sound travels five to seven times wider and longer in the aquatic environment. And this is one of the things which can be striking and really hard to comprehend even. As um, and as you mentioned, all the goods, everything what we consume, were use, they have been in one moment, either as a final product or the in-between in the productions being transported from one part to another part uh, with the boats in the seas and oceans. And this traffic actually increased in the last uh, 70 years for 50, like it's like exponentially increasing, you know, with the global connections also, which it's something which we mostly forget about it. Uh, the, even though that most of the people, like big, bigger majority of people is actually living in coastal areas, and still the coastal or staying or pre being present in the aquatic environment is mostly leisure time. And leisure time is the relaxed time, which is really good for us. 
but uh, sometimes then we forget that you know also the environment where we go for the leisure has to have like their own activity and with this kind of sonic presence and with this kind of strong resonance we stayed in the stays in the waters for so long you know you know the sun travels so far then it also intervenes and impacts the communication of the species and all these different aquatic uh, creatures you know for instance um there is for fact known that uh, the bigger like whales or dolphins or some other creatures also like some other fish they are just trying to go away from it and they try to move away from the human presence because why is the sound so important it's like after 50 meters is already quite uh you know very quickly we are in the dark sides of the sea you know after 200 meters it's only the twilight there's only a little bit of sun coming penetrating through the water and then down there there is lots of darkness and in this darkness of course the, all this other sensory perception which you know i always say if humans we are visual animals but other animals they you know they need something else to be navigating around and fish and in general all these kind of aquatic creatures they're mostly using sense of touch this means that they feel the pressure they use a lot of the smell or the chemical to navigate and sound. And sound is one of the main communications, you know, so they understand where they are, where the others are, how to find his family or his group, uh, which is going around and so on. So this is something which uh, when I start to say this or when I explain this to audiences, most people are always like, uh-huh, you know, because it's something that we don't think or it's not familiar to us so it's always different yeah that's that's fascinating in, in, indeed and it's to think about like how um ocean creatures have been kind of adapt ad, adapting to uh, avoid uh the the impact that we have created uh, there and what what i would um be interested to hear is like because you're you're talking about quest for serenity so is is your work or like not not specifically uh, aquatosen but also any other work that you um are you what do you hope like to um uh how do you hope to engage people in this like do of course we've been talking about the impact and the consequences but how do you see this um changing or maybe uh, affecting uh, the o ocean and creatures in the future. Do you think, of, obviously, we are um, facing uh, a major environmental crisis? And do you, do you, ho how do you hope that the uh, work that you do might influence um, decision making and our actions? Yeah, this is like um, complex to answer, but I try to be uh, short. Um, quest for serenity was actually kind of self ironization I would say, because in the beginning, when I started to record with hydrophones, it was very naive, I would say. You know, I really wanted to hear the aquatic sounds and the creatures and so on. And it took me some while to figure it out that, yes, mostly I was recording boats and ships and human impact, not so much the animals. And it took me some while also to learn where I can record them. You know, like just recently, I was in a, one really excellent journey through um, art science journey in Galapagos, organized by Co Artist Foundation, and uh, there I had this kind of, I think, first time that I have like recordings really clear without any boats, which they would be like around and stuff like that. So it's quite interesting to explore that and to hear that. Uh, to go more further to talking with uh, how to influence the politicians or people which they're decision makers, you know, I would say. I was just recently part of one uh, bigger European platform, which was called Starts for Water. And in frame of that, I was chosen as one of the residents to work with a team of, uh, of uh, Ur Institute from uh, Dubrovnik which they had a challenge out about zero pollution Adriatic. Adriatic is actually, Adriatic Sea is the, my 
near sea, I would call it, because I'm coming from Slovenia. So uh, this is the sea which I know as a child, as a child. And um, there we have been now working for one and a half year quite intensely on representing the problematics of um, coastal cities as Dubrovnik, which is like very, very touristic based city. And then also with their uh, uh, we are in contact through Ur Institute and Jim Shutich, who is running it with um, different departments of municipality. And there is, but you know, these talks are slow because, you know, first we presented what we did, then it's now like rethinking how they could implement that into the city strategy. But um, one of the topics which we put out together with Maran Zitnik and Tanya Minarik and some other colleagues which we collaborated inside of the project was to talk about what does how to how to still be touristic city but be also environmental friendly and uh, that all this could be not so, not giving such a strong impact into the oceans and seas, especially in coastal areas. So one of the things is also the detergents or, you know, simple daily production which we use for our living to move from the production products which they are not eco-friendly to the products which are eco-friendly and so on. So these are like some of the steps, but these are just some of the steps. I still think that, you know, um, bigger corporations or usage of the um, this kind of big industrial boats or commercial kind of transport and so on should also be advised and it is advised but these kind of changes are quite slow because of course there's lots of economic impact beyond that so yeah yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. but as you were saying like that um, I think yeah as part of your work that uh now, like we have, uh, of course, we have also technologies and tools to help us understand the impact as well, and also understand like the um, uh, understand life in in different environments and these ecosystems may be a bit better. So hopefully, and uh, I feel that it's a work like yours uh, can help us experience these uh, kind of worlds that we feel otherwise that we have no connection to. So, so I, so this in a way is a little bit my hope, <laughs> where my hope lies for the future as well. So thank you again for um, being part of the exhibition and also for, uh, for being here, like to, to say more about your, your brilliant work. Thank you, Robertina. Thank you, Rini. Thank you for involving me to that. And yeah, I hope that people which they will listen to my work, they will also experience the joy and beauty of the aquatic climates, but also the anxiety and uh, uncomfortable, uncomfortable pushes where the sound of the boats are present. Yeah.